So the next portion of the video is just going to go through some of the features of the wiring on the car. Yesterday we touched on the, the C127, the PDM, and, and the keypads that are in the car. And keep in mind, this, this system can work across any variety of motorsport project. It could be a rally car, it could be a side-by-side -side project, it could be a time attack car, it could be a street car. We have a lot of options for the M1 and Motec systems for the, the Toyota Super and street car configuration. We have a C125 dash bezel that's available on our website. Uh, we have a PDM loom that replaces the entire front chassis loom of the car. Um, and that's all plug and play into the OE connections. So all that stuff's available on our website. And I won't get into that much today, but I, I will just kind of get into some basics of how I build the loom, um, how I design it a certain uh, routing, um, what we use for different components, because we make these pretty modular so that if you have any sort of failure, a fire or anything like that, you only have to replace the part that gets damaged. You know. We have, a, we have a break at the firewall with the Deutsch Autosport, so you don't need to replace anything in the cabin. You can just replace the firewall outward. Or if you want to build a spare engine loom um, for a spare engine and do a quick swap, we can make it to where you've just got two outsides and then you only have to buy one cabin side and just pin everything exactly the same. So I'll take you through some of the features where it'll show how, the, how serviceability is really easy on the intake manifold. I've got a couple of brakes there where you keep all the sensors mounted and you just simply break a couple of Autosport connections and you can take things apart real simple and you know speeds up time and, and, and it, it doesn't allow for things to be you know plugged in incorrectly from injector to injector or get swapped around and that sort of thing. So I'll get right into it. I'll, I'll, I'll phase this part of the, the video out and uh, show you what it's all about under the engine bay. All right, so here's the engine bay. As you can see, most of the loom is pretty well tucked away. I've got some things going on here. We pulled the turbo out just to check a couple things as we got back from the from the race as far as servicing and whatnot. But generally, the uh, factory wiring harness comes through here, um, and we sell these billet plates that that accept a, a Deutsch Auto Sport 2035 and a 1419. Um, and generally when we make our looms for the street cars, we put all of the engine sensors and whatnot, all the OEM circuits in the 2035 and just the ignition and the coils through the 1419. They generally run over here and, and come through. Um, but in my car, we had the downpipe there and I wanted to get a little bit more custom. So we actually came through here for the engine loom. This is simple. If I want to pull the motor, I can just break this and everything will come with it. Uh, the the ignition actually goes through right there. This loom is, you know, just right here. Simple, easy to make a spare. If you had a fire or something, you know, we can just make another one and, and pin it accordingly. We didn't have to replace an entire engine harness. So having these pieces modular is, is definitely got some benefits to it. Uh, <clears throat> the Auto Sport's pretty easy to get uh, back in, in line once you get the keyways lined up. Um, you'll hear it click once it's nice and seated. Um, we've got 12 injectors on the car and on these we actually put a boot on here for every one of them. So it's common while you're racing if you've got to check something people get moving fast and they go to disconnect it uh, sensors or injectors or coils or whatnot and they'll pull the the wires right out the back of the connector. See I have these exposed so that could technically happen there, but on the injectors, I went ahead and just booted these so that they'll never get messed with. Everything is potted in there and terminated correctly. We're not gonna have a wire wiggle loose or something. So all that just creates more integrity in, in the system. Uh, the cool thing about if we wanna service this and pull the intake manifold off, the way I wired this is every intake manifold is gonna have a TPS and a MAP sensor in it. Some people put air temp in it, we didn't. Um, cool thing is, is down here, these two auto sports, they're mounted to the intake manifold and they carry all the power and signal wires for all 12 injectors and the TPS and the maps. So if we wanna pull the intake manifold off, all we gotta do is break these two rail feed lines here and here 
we don't have center returns on this car so we break both sides and we pull the charge pipe off of course we pull the hardware off everything is studded and all we got to do is undo these and all this wiring stays so easy serviceability you pull it right on you pull it right off nothing has to get disconnected for every single injector you don't have to worry about plugging one in backwards or you know the the secondary went on the primary or the number number one went on the number three or two or whatever getting stuff flipped around you know it's just simple it's repeatable and you don't ever have to worry about any screw-ups so uh the uh the looms all have the highest quality connectors in them you know we use all uh oe connectors anywhere possible we use the Deutsch Auto Sports everywhere we can. Um, as you can see, most of the loom comes from the firewall and it's all tucked under the intake manifold. There's a little bit that wraps around this side and comes up here for a breakout. This gives us our crank sensor. We also use turbo speed on this car. We've got the water temp here. And then over here, we've got leads for the, uh, the six EGTs. That all goes and mounts up there on the back of the cylinder head. I think you can see that in the video pretty good. It also houses our LTC, which you can see down there, which powers up our Lambda sensor. Um, and then here's our part of our CO2 system. We use the wastegate pressure as part of that system in the MoTeC. And then we also run twin 44 millimeter gates on this car. And we, we measure the position of those gates with, with these units here. These are from Powerhouse. These just came out. They're, wastegate position sensors for the Tile 44s. Other gates have had the position sensors in the past, um, but never for the 44 that we found. So it's good that Brian at Powerhouse made those uh, for us and the rest of the guys that run these gates. So the other sensors we run is we run the EMAP or exhaust pressure or back pressure or drive pressure, depending on who you're talking to. We run a seven, seven bar sensor for that. Um, and that lets us know how much pressure's in the exhaust of the turbo system. Uh, we use that for some of our tuning data. We also use that in, in uh, some of our CO2 setup of how much we want to close the gates uh, based on how that back pressure is doing. So uh, we also look at water pressure here. This lets us know if we've had a failure in the head gasket or if the head gasket is about to fail. Uh, people use it for a variety of other things as well we generally won't get into that right now uh, but if I were to remove this intake manifold I may do that for another video and kind of showcase how everything lands on here I mean it's super clean and if you were to pull this engine all you really need to do is break that one connection and pull it off but we've got stuff on here for crankcase pressure we've got obviously the cam and crank 12 injectors water pressure fuel pressure our oil pressures in here we've also got oil temp in our dry sump tank so we know we have a heater between rounds and we heat the oil we know what the oil temp is in here and how much we need to heat it to get some of the fuel to evaporate out of it um, obviously we've got our starter motor our starter solenoid um, and our line lock is down here so some of this stuff goes through anything that's mounted to the body we try and keep that in the in the the chassis harnesses as much as possible. Some stuff does carry over uh, into the engine loom just depending on how the overall configuration was built and planned for. But generally, if you pull the motor, you don't have to fish anything through the engine bay. You just break, basically break that auto sport, pull it out of the car, you know, unhook all the mechanical things, and bang, you just plug it back in when you're ready to go. One connection, not having to undo everything and lean it over to the side and do an engine change or you know because sometimes you're trying to do it fast at a track or you're trying to do it overnight and not stay up all night so uh, the other thing too is this, this wiring super robust I mean you can work on this thing it can take a lot of temperature obviously we route the this side of the loom right under the header and we use a Raycam DR25 on that and even the heat of the header doesn't melt it. Um, it just takes a beating. And when, when it's installed correctly and routed correctly, as you can see, it ends up being a nice package. So um, I'm going to raise the car up and kind of show you some stuff underneath next.